Studies. This is our second talk for the day, Southeast Asia Art Watch, Thailand. And before I hand the time over to the panel, please allow me to introduce you to our speakers for today. First, we have um, Dusadi Hantraku, an artist who began working with clay almost 20 years ago and continues to use fired clay, language, and other materials to compose spaces that are familiar yet unknown. And he's also part of the 2019 Singapore Biennial. And next to him, we have Katima Tariprasit, who holds a full-time teaching position and at the Department of Visual Arts, Faculty of Fine Arts, Chiang Mai University. She is also part of the curatorial team of Mayam Contemporary Art Museum in Chiang Mai. And next we have Korakrit Arunanon Chai, a visual artist, filmmaker, and storyteller who employs his versatile practice to tell stories embedded in cultural transplantation and hybridity. And finally, we have our panel moderator, Gregory Galligan, independent curator, art critic, educator, archivist, and consultant, whose work has spanned the globe from New York to Bangkok since the mid-1980s. He currently and curates Thai art archives, an independent nonprofit platform. Please join me in welcoming our panelists for today. Is this working? This is working. I can hear myself. Uh, I have the pleasure today of first thanking the C-Focus team for having us and for the panel and the team for welcoming me as moderator. I feel it's quite a privilege to be sitting here with three representatives of a really exciting and, and emerging scene uh, in Thailand as well as uh, globally. Um, we're going to use the last decade as a kind of framework for thinking about the Thai art scene, art world, whatever we want to call that, which also, of course, includes the diaspora of Thailand around the world, New York, Berlin, and other major cities in Asia. Um, and we're going to be thinking back a bit toward what was happening early on in 2010 and what, where we've come since that time. It's, it's really a special period for me because I actually moved to Thailand from New York in 2010, so I was very quickly uh, initiated both in the um, artistic and political worlds of Thailand in 2010, which were, which were uh, very active at that moment. Um, that decade, I'm, I'm only going to say a, a, a brief comment, that decade has been marked, as we all know already, historians are talking about 2010 to about the present, as being a very tumultuous one for Thailand. Politically and um, artistically, uh, this has been a very active and uh, in many ways disruptive period, a fascinating period of things uh, emerging as well as some things uh, being left behind. Um, it's also been a period of a lot of environmental uh, stresses in Thailand, flooding, droughts, we we're predicting another drought this year, stock up your drinking water. So um, a lot has been happening since 2010 and of course you know about the military coup in 2014. So Thailand's been dealing with um, some of the stresses of undergoing its 12th, the number sometimes varies, but it's, it's a 12th military coup which was only recently resolved in 2000, late 2019 with the new elections. Um, we'd say resolved in um, various degree. People will disagree on that. Um, so many people think about the scene as being very exciting and there are others at the moment who are wondering where we're headed. Um, it's, we can detect wonderful new developments but at the same time it's kind of hard to know. And people, there was a panel about two weeks ago in Bangkok uh, talking about Thailand surging ahead or just treading water. There was a kind of equivocal tone to that panel and I don't think it was ever resolved uh, in one way or the other. But you have in front of you today, and that's, that's why I feel very privileged as an observer and as a participant in some degrees in this scene, as a guest, uh, a long-term resident, uh, we have an example of three emerging, extremely dynamic new generation, members of the new generation. Um, 
Ndusa D, whose work has captivated uh, attention both regionally and globally uh, for many reasons. It's, it's empathy, it's history, sense of memory. Uh, Katima, one of the predominant new curators on the scene. We have new curators, new scholars. People said to me in 2010, what's Thailand going to be like in a few years? I said, oh, just wait. By 2005, many of these people will be coming back from abroad. So we have new scholars and curators, and Katima is very much representative of that movement. And Crit, of course, who has really made an impact, both uh, regionally and globally, recently named by one uh, magazine as one of the most significant living artists to emerge over the last decade. Did I just embarrass you? <laughs> True, true. So, let's turn it over to them. I'm very happy to do so. Um, so we have a very dynamic scene, and I, beginning with Katima, I thought I might ask each of you to talk a little bit about your own practice, your own role, and then maybe we can talk a bit about what you think about recent developments. But perhaps you could each introduce yourself. Some people will be familiar with you already, of course, and others wonder what you're doing. So. Uh, hello, and thank you again for having me here. My name is Kitty Jari Prasid. And um, as mentioned, I was working at uh, Chiang Mai University at Lachla and also working as an like, independent curator. Somehow I was attached with my um, Canterbury Art Museum. It's a new museum opened in 2016 in Chiang Mai. So basically I'm working with a lot of curators from the regions and also working with young emerging artists from Thailand and Southeast Asia. So I will give a little bit short introduction about myself here first. And I also um, having this curator lab called Waiting You Curator Lab is an experimental curator lab working with different uh, art institution and gallery in Thailand. Yeah, I will pass the mic to Hi, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Dusadi Hunter Kuhn. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist, and, and um, you know, um, what I've been working on, you know, I, I've been concent concentrating on working, you know, I'm, I'm with clay and then drawings and then installations. And um, I have an example of that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of the practice that I'm doing here. I'm a part of a Singapore Biennale, and you know, uh, my work is in Block 22. And if you guys have time, you know, um, 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 please stop by. I think it's, uh, you know, um, um, it's, it's, uh, you know, I'm very happy about the, the, the installation. And, and, and thanks to Singapore Art Museum and John to put it all together and so you know um, I've been uh, you know I'm um, practicing you know um, I've been working uh, uh, in art for you know um, for quite a few years and and and, and of course like you know I'm uh, thinking about the development you know um, or my involvement with you know um, the Thai art scenes you know I'm um, in the past like you know I'm 10 20 years ago it's been very drastically you know I'm, I'm, I'm shifting in so many ways and we have in inspirational, you know, um, figures like, like Grit and, you know, um, Rur Grit and Montien Budma and all those guys that are, you know, has been, you know, um, have been uh, uh, making their marks, you know, um, um, locally and globally as well. And, you know, um, 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 it, open, it opens up so many things. And so, um, you know, um, 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 I'm trying to kind of like, you know, um, go through them and, you know, um, 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 forge my own kind of like, you know, um, path to maybe perhaps like see something for myself and uh, if anything happen, happens. Hi, um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, my, my name is uh, Cora Kret Arun Anandchai. Um, I grew up in uh, ba Bangkok till I was like 18 and I went to like, uh, like an art school in America and I kind of um, <coughs> like stayed and uh, finished my master degree there and uh, my I guess main professor is uh, Rikrit Tiravanija and that's like maybe the reason I went to the master program there um, and then I think since I graduated from Columbia University in 2012 um, and even though I usually go back to Thailand like twice or three times a year I think right after my MFA was when I kind of like uh, started kind of going back to Thailand to actually through Rikrit uh, is uh, kind of like my introduction to like the, the like the Thai art community and the Thai eco art ecosystem, and then I started going back to Thailand a lot, and uh, also like um, I guess I've been developing my 
practice since then and um, right now I spend around a third of the year in Thailand, a third of the year based in New York and a third just kind of like wherever work is in, uh, in, two, in last, like, last October, a year ago, I, I started um, a project called Ghost. It's like a small triennial for time-based work and the whole idea was to try and sort of introduce contemporary art, um, time-based contemporary art, so video, performance, sound, whatever, um, through like uh, through more like the metaphor of like um, animism, which is something that I feel like feels very close to a lot of like basically like any country not Western, you know, um, and I, I kind of feel. Uh, you know, strongly that artists, like, or like I wanted to see artists uh, and introduce artists to, to the, through the context of storytellers and not so much object makers, but more so like maybe like experience uh, makers, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's the two things I mainly do now is my art and running this triennial, yeah. Dusadi, I'm thinking of something you just said, which was very interesting to me about, you spoke about being so impressed by this, this recent generation, Montien, Recruit, and others. Recruit, of course, is still current. Um, Montien would be too if he hadn't passed away prematurely. Um, and that's interesting to me because it seems to coalesce with this idea of people right now working through a recent history in their own work and coming to terms with Thai contemporary art or the recent contemporary, so to speak, or the modern. Um, how has that maybe affected your practice? And Crit, you mentioned animism, which is very interesting to me too, because it sounds like, uh, in your work, you're definitely trying to, in some ways, come to terms with animism in the modern world and its, its place in contemporary life. We sometimes think of them as very opposed but in your work, um, I've seen them very interrelated. Would you each like to speak a little bit more about that? That's interesting to me in relation to when I think about all the turmoil and uh, this moment of reckoning, so to speak, looking back. Yeah. Right, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at this point in time um, um, in the history of, you know, um, of course, like the world and in Southeast Asia itself, where we kind of like realize that, you know, um, modernity, um, um, has been introduced to us through this, you know, um, atrocities of like something like Vietnam and then World War II. And so, you know, um, um, and then you try to kind of like, you know, um, trace it all the way back pre like Buddhism, just to see, you know, um, that people settled here in this region. It's not even, you know, there's no Thailand or Singapore or anything like that at the time, you know, we're talking about like prehistory time. And so um, um, I try to trace it all the way back over there. And of course, you know, um, more so it's 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 about you know um the story that happened locally but you know um it talks about humanities in general and so um it's kind of you know um it's it's uh it's the stories of 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 all of us almost as if but it happens it just happened to happen in this place called you know thailand Great. Uh, oh well you were talking about um sorry the the dichotomy between what like dealing with Say in your in your in your heritage, so to speak, and um, kind of how does that fit into contemporary life? It's a big theme in some of your your uh, film work, for sure. It seems. Um, yeah. Well, I I I think like one on a personal level, one of the reason that I chose to make work on this theme and to deconstruct like ideas of belief system and animism and ghosts um, <clears throat> and spirituality is I feel like in, in Thailand there's a lot of kind of like to me growing up like, like uh, fear towards this subject and then finding like modernization as, as almost like an escape route from it you know in like in, in, in a way where like <clears throat> if you can turn the electricity on <clears throat> in, in a place or find like science or whatever that, that like the ghost will disappear and, and, and I think <clears throat> as you get older and, 
and there's the internet and you do research and you get, you know, you, you, you realize that a lot of this are, at least in the, con I mean, just in the context of Thailand, and I'm sure it's the same everywhere, like a, a kind of, a, like a, a sort of like, partly like political construction, you know, like the, the whole like, um, just for example, like, like, you know, like the whole, in, in Thailand, the main religion is Buddhism and you're born Buddhist if, unless otherwise, you know, naturally. And then also like, if you look in history, there's, there's specific um, moments in the King Rama IX, the last king that passed away like a few years ago during like uh, the Cold War that um, to kind of like, like sort of like unite uh, centralized Buddhism to Bangkok, to the, to the center of the country, like as a way to actually crush like the, the outer like kind of skirts of like the country, for example, you know, other kind of like, let's say like the power, like the power structures in like uh, Northeast or areas that were further away. And then you kind of start to see like the bigger picture, like all these agendas hidden within this kind of fear-based system that you can't really like argue with or something, you know, because it's like based from a time, a long time ago, and it's really not. And then, <clears throat> so I kind of felt like, at least in terms of um, my art practice and also my organization curatorial practice, like there, there is a layer to try and <clears throat> not to say that these realities aren't true, um, but to, 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 to kind of see, yeah, see it beyond something that can't be touched or seeing beyond something that is, you know what I mean, that, because that, otherwise these kind of like oppressions like will not disappear, at least you, you won't even understand or see the, 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 oppress, the force of the oppression. And then also um, on the other end to kind of reject that like, <clears throat> Uh, none of it is true, you know, and, and just look to like, like a Western kind of idea of modernization is also maybe like the, the kind of, uh, the, the, the project that the West, like, the, like it's like to continue the, the like violent force of colonization anyways, you know, and, and if you look like, like even, like I was talking to Patrick, he uh, curated the, um, part of the Singapore Biennale, you know, and, and we were, and, and I've experienced this partially in Ghost too, where like some weird stuff happens, like while you're installing and it's like maybe supernatural and you don't know, you know, and then the, the idea like where like these things don't disappear and they're kind of like part of reality and I think there are ways to deal with it, you know, and it's not a dichotomy between like, you know, like, uh, the West and the East, the new and the old, but at the same time, it's also, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I lost my thought, but you, you know I'm trying to say. <laughs> no, there are, a lot, there are a lot of themes in there. I mean, there are a lot of issues. One of them, you talk about Buddhism being used as a kind of nationalizing identity to, and a certain amount of power behind it. Um, uh, I love this idea of not rejecting one tradition for another. Um, the drone and some of your film, for me, stood for that. The technology, and yet there's a world of myth or religion or another kind of reality that's being, that you're dealing with and that you, in general, have to deal with as Thai artists. You live in a world in which um, many people who are skeptical may question that element and others who want to see it integrated. Um, in terms of tradition and heritage, which these things are, they are, in, they are inherited. Kitima, you must also be dealing with that in developing the collection at Mayam. I know it's, it's a unique collection, it's a private collection, but it also is dealing with uh, not only late modernity, but obviously the contemporary and, and, and the issues that are captured by it, if you could... Yeah, Speak a bit. our like recent share at my EM is called Temporal Topography, a new acquisition from 2011 to present, which means that it's really speaking about something that happened in Thailand back into last 10 years ago. But before I'm speaking about this, I would like to mention a bit that what Bang say and what um, Grit say is actually showing what our really artistic practice right now in Thailand are working on about. 
like looking into like prehistorical, pre-modernity, pre-nationality, or um, spiritual. And looking to this small narrative was kind of the big thing in Thailand right now, and also representing our collection as well. We try to see the alternative way of speaking about our own history. So, I think our collection is not just only represent what happened recent in Thailand, but it's something that's showing our geopolitical body what happened exactly in terms of like the situation it becoming an archive of history itself as well so this part recent 10 years of thailand has been chaotic uh, in terms of like political event that happened like the coup or the huge protest and a lot of artists actually work regarded to that there is issue right uh, even though my exhibition in Miami is called Temporal Topography, but I saw that it just visually connected in terms of landscape. But the theme and the artwork itself is really talking on its own history about what actually happened in society back then. For example, I have a work from Ruang Sak Anumon Miwat, who also presented in Singapore Biennale this year as well, in the same pavilion with the city, if you saw it, as in front here. Um, so his work, for example, is actually display a shuttle glass. That glass is actually came from Central World, which is a department store in the heart of Center City in Bangkok, where the purchase were happen in 2011. And it's actually um, the government order to, to dis discontinue the purchase by using the real bullet gun at uh, using the real gun and it's actually an evident piece that shuttle glass is a real glass that artists presented at an artwork and also questioning about what really happened in the society back then so this is for example is one of the pieces that we collect in our collection and we still keep continue and de uh, develop our collection toward this idea of what can be present our society and history Yeah, I think you've raised a really interesting um, point, both of you, uh, in this idea of the last 10 years in Thailand have been very expansive in terms of artists and curators and um, others working to kind of be more inclusive, obviously, about the histories that haven't been told. Huge theme right now within Southeast Asia. Um, how to expand, how to decentralize, that's a key term right now, in Thailand, decentralizing the art world, which simply means pulling it away from the center, pulling it away from the capital, and really acknowledging uh, the histories that haven't been told for many years because we've been so focused on the center. If you, each of you, if you were to think of what is, what is really exciting to you right now about the scene, and we all, I think, have that, that impulse in us that we're, we could say, wow, I just, I'm so, happy about this, what might you cite? Whether you're here all the time based, here all the time or crit, coming and going, maybe from an outside perspective even, you come back and what do you see? Ducity, what do you see as an artist's perspective perhaps? And Kitima as more of what a quote culture worker perspective? Well, I, uh, uh, um, I really, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm agree with you with uh, the keywords, you know, um, now, well, now meaning like within this, you know, um, two minutes, um, is decentralization, and you know, um, it's very exciting to kind of like see all these, you know, um, uh, 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 privately uh, um, owned, you know, um, um, fundings are being distributed. My EM is one of, you know, um, um, this type of uh, establishments, and I think it's 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 quite exciting to kind of like see these type of uh, establishments, like you know, I'm, I'm being popping up hopefully more and more, just to kind of like, you know, um, um, hopefully, and that will, you know, um, move these type of uh, stories that, 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 that instead of uh, being, you know, um, concerned with itself, with, you know, um, what's the central governing technologies to, you know, um, the stories of perhaps, you know, regular people that, 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 that you know, um, that's, of course, you know, um, um, the integral parts of, 
history making itself. And so um, if that's you know, um, what's exciting to me. And then another thing is that um, Silapakon University, of which is a, you know, um, a really a main institution you know, um, um, in the arts in Thailand now, is opening its own you know, um, archived collections that you know, um, these are award-winning works you know, um, from almost like 50 or 60 years ago to the public. So uh, they're opening up these collections to the public. And I think you know, um, these works are allowed to be borrowed to um, other exhibitions as well. And so um, there's like this possibilities or these chances of, of, of rewriting, if that's you know, um, a word for it, uh, to, to reframing the idea of uh, how we imagine these artworks as artifacts and how it, you know, um, how it reads then and how it reads now and how we can reframe to you know, um, something uh, um, more significant and more heartfelt and, and more truthful you know, um, um, about, about, about what's happening on site and elsewhere. Okay. <laughs> For as someone who working in an institution, I'm quite really happy to see a lot of dynamic happening right now in Thailand. Back into 2018, no, 19, last year is 2019, right? Yes, today. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, back until like last year, we actually have like um, three called like huge biennale and festival, like we have Bangkok Art Biennale, we have Bangkok Biennial, we have Thailand Biennale, we have Girls 2061, right? We have Penale, we have Kongen Manifesto. We actually have a lot of like cover on art event and festival happen everywhere. And something that came up to me is we as a Thai person are really like to work individual. We don't have a history of working collectively, not collaborative, but collective. So I saw like a small a group of young artists kind of like working together or um, kind of like a curator, a young one like working, grouping together like during contemporary and most of them don't have actual space. We work on like online platform and there's different kind of platform these days. So for me, it's quite interesting to see this diversity happening around the country. Mm. <coughs> um, I, I, I feel like every, every time I get like uh, curated into a show not in the West and every time I like kind of like visit the, the region or specifically Thailand, I, I feel like um, <clears throat> I maybe because of, of the lack of infrastructure and, and like also like market forces there, I, I feel like <clears throat> people are really engaged in, in like discourse and politics and I feel like most people do art because of like some kind of interest, usually like beyond like quote unquote like contempt like art you know, or like Western art. And, and I, I feel like it's always like really inspiring to see like this, few, this field or this career path as is, 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 is kind of like not going into like a studio and being on an island and like, do you know what I mean? Exploring your own, just your own subjectivity, but kind of like being part, almost like finding your own perfect like, like sub Reddit, like, uh, you know, group like, sharing interests with people within like you know like the region and within the country and you know and and like kind of like yeah a, a, able to to kind of like yeah for me like every time i literally am in this part of the world like i was just on a research tip, trip in like uh the for the guangzhou biennale and i, I and we all had to do a presentation and i felt like <clears throat> we all like had the same interests, you know, and the presentation was almost kind of like, it's, it's really like reminded me of like, why I chose to be an artist and, and why I see this as, as, as something that I can probably like be engaged with till I like, you know, like can't, till I like die or something, you know? And then the other thing I'm interested, I, it on, <clears throat> on a larger scale, 
um, at least in, in, in Thailand on a structural level, maybe not just in the arts, but in relationship to it and <clears throat> with the younger generation even below me. So I feel like a lot of people in my generation and my parents' generation are very kind of like <clears throat> grew up in a time of kind of like, like economic, like, prosperi like uh, prosperity where like, like lots of these like um, <clears throat> Chinese like, uh, like businessmen in Thailand set up these like big, big like companies. Um, uh, and I feel like a lot of like discourse in Thailand have, have always been kind of in a way about like against like the, the, the main kind of like power institution there. But I feel like now more and more I'm seeing people talk about like, like deconstructing like the form of capitalism there and the form of power. And you know, when I, when I was in Korea, like, you know, there's this whole big, like the whole um, protests and like the whole Samsung, uh, you know, situation and the corruption that just happened. And I was really thinking about that future where like, like, where like Thailand wouldn't become that, you know what I mean? And, and, and thinking about all the people that, that are in my generation and the generation below who talk about like, how do we not let like Thailand be a future where like, there's seven companies and we all work for them, kind of like Korea, you know? And I think that to me is interesting. Yeah, that's it, yeah. I, I'm a little um, taken by the idea of the generation under you because they must be teenagers, no? No, <laughs> no I, I do know, I, I can see what you mean. I think that this theme um, between the individual and the collective, the individual and the, the, the nation or the relationship of Thailand to the world. This is something you, you seem to all be dealing with in different ways um, and how to, to kind of reconcile those differences. Thailand is known for fostering a lot of individual projects and efforts. Um, they tend to arise with um, an energetic or catalytic type person who wants to make things happen. And sometimes there's been criticism. You guys should each perhaps um, speak to this. Um, usually an outside criticism, I think, coming from the West, is that where is the great civic museum? Do you need one? There have been debates about whether or not you need that kind of institution. You've all been talking about wonderful new ways that people do have access now to art through the fest Kitima, you mentioned the, the whole litany, really, Conque Manifesto, the three biennales, the, um, uh, the, the Mayam, which is a new phenomenon in itself. Um, does one need a big civic museum for the future? Is it anything that you uh, uh, dream about? I've heard two different reactions to that usually. Who wants to speak? You want to speak first? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that I can speak about this as it's going to cause any conflict of interest since I'm working for the private museum. My Ian Cotterbury Art is like a private own fund and it's 100% fun by its owner because the owner doesn't want to any like um, public civilian to like interfere with our program. So it's 100% fun by the owner. However, um, speaking about this question about like, do we need one uh, public civilian museum? I guess like from the, what we have now in the country, uh, we still don't have any kind of like contemporary art museum yet that funded by the government. We only have a art center, which seem to have bad for June, that hopefully that is not going to be closed in the next couple of years. Uh, we set in the center of like the, the capital city, which named the ACC. It's actually a really prime location. It's set in like a middle of like the city. However, I saw that it's quite such a benefit. After the setting of the ACC, I think it's kind of like cultural act cultivate a lot of audience. I saw a lot of young generation went into art space, which has never been before in like our own history. So if like, if we have more and more the institution, I'm sure that it's gonna create a new kind of like learning space for our young generation and society, and definitely it's going to be great 
to have one. Why not have one? Yeah. And um, speaking about even though we don't have one now, uh, luckily that our people still pull their skill, pull their effort to working differently on what their interests. Um, I mentioned Konkan Manifesto. Konkan is actually the city in the northeast of Thailand, where it has the long history about like its own history since like Cold War period as well like the base for American military and there's a lot of subject and issue going on right now like about human rights and um, so this Konkan Manifesto is actually uh, initiated by Thanom Cha Pakdi, and who is a scholar and art critic based in Thailand as well and he wants to do something outside of the framework or outside of institution, even though we don't have any institution, but people still entire institution. Okay, so specifically, <laughs> even though we don't have one, but yes, we train to entire it anyway. So um, actually, there's a lot of event going on there. Like uh, everyone, like there's no curatorial framework. There's like everyone who want to exhibit come into the building, just like install your work and anyone who have a statement and want to talk just came and talk. So it's quite a really um, nice vibe to see something happen outside of Bangkok as well. My EM itself is set in, in like Chiang Mai, which is the northern part of the Thailand. Also, um, there's a lot of stuff happening around at Patani in, in the southern part of the country. So it's actually a lot of things happen with our like the force of art infrastructure from the government right now, but it's good to have one anyway. Apart from the government, but in the next few years, I guess we're going to have um, a main art museum soon. They start building it. So within it's called Ho Sin Oh no, sorry. Um, Um, it's the mis right yeah, but it's going to um, be soon, and it's going to show um, national collection of artists in the country. Yep. As an artist, as an artist, do you feel there's a need for that kind of thing to help catalyze the art scene in Thailand, or? I've actually heard some people argue just the opposite, that we don't need to do it that way. We don't need that kind of center anymore or even institution that tends to centralize um, energies. Right, so, uh, um, well, at, you know, um, so far, I guess, you know, um, um, we, we have this two ways to think about it. One is, you know, um, one is a pro museum and then the other one is like, you know, I'm against the museum, but, um, but and of course, like, you know, um, uh, uh, from my own experience, it's, it's you know, um, I do like, you know, um, um, I enjoy looking at, at things, like I, I enjoy it deeply and, and, and I think uh, um, that's why I make art on one part. And so, you know, um, the idea of uh, having, you know, um, some sort of a, a really well-oiled kind of like institution to, to house and archive, you know, um, the histories, but I don't know if it should be centralized or anything like that. You know, um, um, it it would be nice if if it can happen everywhere, so we can kind of kind of like preserve, you know, um, um, some sort of a, you know, um, objects that 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 you know, um, that meant something to someone, and to you know, um, um, and then and and, and then uh, uh, we can kind of like maybe learn what it means now to look at it, you know, um, in relation to the history itself, and then you know, um, to go against it, it's kind of like. You know, um, when you have, when you put this type of a, the idea of a technology of modernity, you know, um, um, against Southeast Asia, and it's always kind of like put us on this kind of like high, hierarchical, you know, um, platform where we're always kind of like following, you know, um, 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 the, the model of the West. And, you know, um, if we're not up to the par with them, we're always like, you know, um, um, labored as being kind of like, you know, um, backwards and not always, you know, and, and, and primitive in some sense. And so, so, so there, you know, um, there are pros and cons, but of course, you know, um, uh, 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 I like to see things and, 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 and um, I like to see it being uh, put together 
perhaps in a more you know um, um, uh, uh, sufficient ways that 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 you know um, that attracts not just the art crowds but everyday people. I think you um, bring up a really interesting issue, and it it applies, I think, throughout Southeast Asia, which is the um, having access and through that access having education about the past. Uh, often, you know, we, we, we are thinking about the future generations and how can they develop a sense of their past in relation to the world. Um, and sometimes museums do help to foster that. Um, uh, they, they build up that heritage in a way that can be very accessible to people. So I think that is interesting. And it's, it's obviously an issue that's being dealt with all throughout Southeast Asia and in different ways. Um, one of the uh, ghosting or looming topics always is the political situation and the fact that even now there is uh, a certain serious degree of censorship in the country. Um, I think there are still rules against or outlawing um, congregation of more than five people in general to, to um, critique anything openly. How do you feel censorship has become a perhaps a very fascinating part of what you've all had to deal with over the years as artists uh, developing in this society and um, uh, the ways it might show up in your work or how you function around it uh, in, in as freely as possible. Uh, Kitima? Let's always me start for it. I hope you're not bored yet. But um, it's my old tradition, ladies <laughs> first. <laughs> Thank you. However, like as I mentioned, I'm quite lucky to be able to work in the institution that is with private fund. So in this case, I don't have to censor myself. I can speak whatever I want to say. And it's quite a big deal here, but we know the limit what we can go through and what we can't. There are certain kind of like a subject in the country that you cannot touch. Most of the time it's all about like Buddhist king or the monarchy and nation yeah uh, so this is kind of like a area that if you don't go further you'll be fine in the country but I don't think like comparing to what happened in Vietnam which way more serious than us we still have liberty to speak out whatever we want to say in terms of creativity way uh, which I doesn't with this doesn't mean that there's no censorship happen in the country. That a lot of uh, work that been censored, like in last two years at Gary World, is the first time in like, our history that the ministry came to the Gary and want to put down like a couple of the artwork, which have like some certain sensitive issue to to what I mentioned before. So. Um, it's never happened before that the government and the army can monitor, come and monitor the gallery, what are we exhibiting. And uh, it's been like that for a year that, that um, the soldier keep, came to the gallery and look what happened in the gallery, which is good. We have new kind of like audience and yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, our audience get extended. So, um, I will start with it and come back again after. Well, with the idea of uh, um, censorship itself, you know, um, um, of course, it's 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 uh, it's happening in Thailand, and you know, um, with uh, uh, from my own perspective, it's like you know, um, um, when you speak against the power that be, you always kind of like give the power back to the power that be and so but there's so many things to talk about that points to the lack thereof of the you know um infrastructures itself and i think you know um the idea you know um, um of it being heavily censored i think you know um, um it it um it allows the artist to be more active instead of uh, being passive in terms of uh, really thinking about proposing ideas that 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 you know um that is 
you know, I'm, I'm not existing at the moment. And I think, you know, um, anything can be political, of course, and then you can talk about anything and then it points to the power that be anyhow. And so um, you figure out a way that can, you know, um, that your topic can expand, you know, um, um, the idea that you have that touches on, you know, um, the inefficiency of the power itself, I think. And so uh, artists always kind of like, you know, um, um, good for that sort of a uh, practice anyhow. Um, I, I, I think like differences like forces evolution. I think the problem with, um, <coughs> even though only a few <coughs> topics like what Joyce um, Ketima mentioned, like the monarchy, the, <coughs> um, like the essentially like the powerful people or forces in, in Thailand that cannot be touched are the only subjects that you can't really like talk about. You understand because they're like the most powerful points in the entire structure. Once you get deeper in anything, like they'll just touch that topic anyways, you know, and it's kind of like a gridlock. And I, I do think that that <coughs> having some feeling of like, yeah, like opposition as, 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 as something to deal with, <clears throat> you know, like often produces more like having something at stake, like as, as a human being, you know, for an artist, I feel like always kind of produces more interesting work. Like being in New York, like post Trump, I feel like the work has, of all my peers and everyone around me has gotten like, so much more interesting, you know what I mean? And, and it feels <coughs> like, yeah, it feels more real and everyone feels the urgency, you know? And, and, I, and I think maybe the way I'd like to think, you know, is, 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 is that if, <coughs> yeah, like some, some ideas probably need to like die off with people, you know, that's why I keep talking about the next generation. There's probably some like depression in that. But then also, like, like if, if there's, like, you know, if, if everyone kind of does something in their own way with, a, with like, a, like, a flow, like, if we can all be, like, water, you know what I mean? At some point, it's going to, like, break through and create, like, whatever, like, you know. I don't think the problem would disappear. I don't think, like, from what we see in the history of the world from, like, you know, there's this, like, <clears throat> thought that like in in uh, maybe like whatever when America wo won like World War II like and they're like oh we solved this problem and then all those problems just became more problems and maybe the problems aren't really problems they're just reality that you deal with but doesn't mean you don't deal with it you know what I mean and I think that's just literally how evolution work like people just deal with these things and I think <clears throat> um, for me like Censorship is, is you know, uh, it's, it's a big issue in Thailand, but maybe the way to deal with it is not to go against, like, like that's, that's, I think, like, just, like, censorship and do something that's the opposite, like, to not be iconoclastic about it, you know, because then you're just going to get censored, and maybe that point everyone kind of already knows and register, you know, and you, you kind of know you're not going to, like, like, beat the military through doing directly the opposite of what like you know they don't want you to do you, of the what they like want you to do you know what i mean and then um yeah i i think the beauty about being an artist is that you can kind of like communicate in like very like in between and you can communicate in ways that maybe like 10 people get it 20 people get it or you can talk in ways that feel more like not just like black or white and i think yeah I, I am hopeful and I feel of the entire art community and I don't see the censorship problem as a roadblock. I see it as a kind of like good thing for our evolution and a good problem to deal with. Yeah. I, I think that's a really interesting viewpoint, almost a good thing. Um, you said something that really inspired me. You said post-Trump, ah, the notion, thank you. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's, I mean, I think that's very interesting about the issues of censorship and whether or not they actually impede creativity or not. I think we wouldn't want to say, you know, you need confrontation in order to be creative, but you, you can turn it perhaps to your advantage, uh, any of us uh, working in that context. Um, looking back a little bit, rather than just today, where we're 2020, we have a certain outlook. Looking back over the last 10 years, and uh, as I say, I feel fortunate to have been an eyewitness at least since 2010. Um, do you feel that political division has in any way affected the art scene uh, uh, amongst the participants of the art scene? Is there a recent contemporary history that we need to still perhaps deal with in Thailand? Or you're, you sound very optimistic, which is wonderful, and, I, and I, I love that. But do you feel that in some ways we've been through any kind of political division, even in the art scene? Does it trickle down at all for you? Or is it something separate from the art world? Anyone who might want to speak to that? Ducity? Well, I think, you know, um, um, that's a rough question. Um, and of course, you know, um, um, with the evidence that we have witnessed, you know, um, um, it, you know um, an event divides people. And sadly, it does, you know. Um, and there are different crowds of um, art and art scenes in Thailand that still, you know, I'm holding on to their own political agendas and stuff like this. And of course, you know, um, I'm more interested in, in, um, <laughs> in you know, um, the idea of a, a, a post-Trump where, you know, of course, like, you know, uh, um, this, 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 this regions and of course, like all over the world, you know, we, we've, we've been affected by the, you know, um, wars initiated by the Americans and, 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 and it's going to be a one coming up maybe with Iran and so, you know, um, um, maybe that's got to stop, maybe that's, <laughs> that's you know, um, it's more interesting than um, um, maybe this dividance that, that, that may be happening in Thailand of which it's, it's crucial as well, but, but you know, um, the effects of it, it's just, it just, it's, 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 it, I mean, it interests me, but, but, but it, it, I don't, you know, um, I like them, you know, um, I, I mean, I, I, I agree with, 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 with a lot of their, you know, um, talking points, and I disagree with a lot of their talking points, and like I said in a, you know, um, in the last, you know, um, comment that, that, you know, um, if any, if anything, it gives the people, you know, um, the more active, you know, um, roles in which we can hopefully, you know, um, initiate, like, you know, um, some sort of a proposals in which we can um, somehow, uh, uh, you know, um, think of ways that we can do things better on at least like both sides, I guess. <coughs> um, the <coughs> yeah, I, I think the political division <coughs> in <coughs> in the art uh, world and in people at large in in Thailand is quite real and it's whether like through like you know and it's very like heavily class related regional related <clears throat> I don't have a good answer <clears throat> to it it's something that is conflicting and <clears throat> the <clears throat> the best answer that everyone holds for is that <clears throat> there is no <clears throat> division and the world doesn't divide into left and right and <coughs> everywhere and <coughs> on our weird left-ish side that the right doesn't rise and you know I d these are bigger questions that I, I feel like sadly I'm, I'm not like smart enough <coughs> to answer like if you look at the biennials that happened last year it they all had like uh, <coughs> you know like I was literally asked to be a part of one and then and then like as an advisor and I got told to like I can't be in the other one because if I do that one because clearly like these are like oppositions and the, and and then like yeah it, it was it's kind of like sad that it's that way but I think that whole uh, packaging of what this was based on the people that organize it like <clears throat> it's on a personal level and it's like the personal as a politic, but then when you look at the work, kind of like all these themes still exist, all the like, it's not like the one work in this 
biennial is ideologically against the other one in the other biennial. You know what I mean? Practically, like, all the work shown in every biennial festival, you can pretty much, like, <coughs> it's, it's, it's in a shared world together, you know? And, it, and it's not, like, <coughs> it's actually not that different, you know? So the, 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 the packaging of it and then the kind of politics or which side you're against or for or whatever, like, I, I, it, it becomes more like a, a, like a personal kind of, <coughs> I don't know, like, and that I can, like, really undo, but I would say that, <coughs> For me, it's, it's more interesting. <coughs> like, I, I, I guess it's, it's, it's more interesting when there's not like just like, like two sides, but then where there are like five or six or ten oppositional like sides and, 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 and recognizing that each of those like uh, points share like an interest and a disinterest. You know what I mean? And, and, and how like I feel like for the sake of evolution, that's probably better to recognize like that, you know, to, to have a stance, but to have like maybe a few and not be so like, like binary, you know what I mean? Because the reality is probably closer to that or something, you know, yeah. I try not to censor myself, but uh, I will censor myself a bit. <laughs> Speaking about this hierarchy stuff in the art world in Thailand, but I mean like, Great, that's quite really positive about the scene and what really happened. But speaking from someone from afar, because I'm not involved in any kind of like um, things that happen. No, not, that's not true. But um, I mean, like my position is something like really an, like an, a really weird situation to be able to looking at everyone work and. Um, Sadly, that we still have like a heavily hierarchy in terms of like in the art world so much, and like which organization work. That's why we have five Biennale. That's why we have so many Biennale because none of none of us want to talk to each other. That's quite sad, right? Mm. I will stop myself. Just this. Um, censor it. Like I'm sorry, I cannot go through further. <laughs> It, we, and we were just on such a high note there for a moment. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the, it's interesting. It, it's focused on this Biennale issue for many years now. This has come up over and over. Thailand needs its own Biennale. And I mean, of course, all major cities have been looking at this because Biennales are such catalysts, um, uh, largely for the economy as well as for artistic reasons and for city development and urban development. Um, so. Suddenly, we had these three biennales coalesce. They kind of seemed to come out of nowhere after there was a lot of talk. And yet, as you're saying, Katima, there are these different factions, um, and they can be porous, we notice in Thailand. It's not that you, it's like you say, the work doesn't necessarily reflect one side of something. But I guess the curators are guilty of this? I don't know. Um, it's when we impose a theme, maybe, that we're trying to pull together works. But can you, I mean, this, this idea of bi the Biennale, and we would expect that a Biennale or a Biennial, which was very important to a certain group of Thai artists who put together one of those three, they said, we are, I said to them, why are you not a Biennale? And they said, we're not Italian. I said, okay, that's, that's easy to understand. But that's loaded, too, that's loaded. They did not need to be Italian in the sense of linking to Venice and linking to the tradition, but they could take the format and do something different with it. Um, each, each of those events was interesting in its own right, but maybe we each had a favorite in the end, which is uh, easy to happen. Can you talk a little bit more about the Biennale? It's such a watershed moment. And um, how, how did you each come to terms with this, these Biennales? Did you like them or did you find problems in them, or uh, how, how did you respond to them? Ducidi, as an artist, were, were, um, I'm, I'm a little unclear if I think back, were you in one of the particular ones? I, forgive me, okay. Yeah, I, um, I was a part understand. of a, a, a Thailand Biennale that happened last, last year that's funded by the state. And you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm 
very excited that we are having all these you know um, events happening all over the country you know um, um, it talks about a lot of the things about you know um, Thailand and then um, it's you know um, um, when you think about you know um, like the idea of a quote unquote like civil society or you know um, civic spaces you know um, I think art plays a very important role in kind of like imagining that and you know um, and Thailand itself you know um, um, are you know I'm proposing all this you know I'm um, major events like a friend uh, actually you know a few friends are you know a lot of friends are actually involved in all of these biennales and 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 it is about you know um uh, uh, building you know um, um, the capability of you know um, the infrastructure and then the resources that we have and you know um I don't know if it's you know um, the uh, uh, the end goal is to be whatever whatever like successful to have successful and to have you know all this uh, who knows like um, 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 what these events are supposed to create but 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 on one hand you know um it is you know um to me it is about you know um we all work the most of us you know um all of us if not you know um we we work very very hard and and we need you know um like you know um places or events to, for us to spend our leisure times, you know, um, intellectually. And I think, you know, um, these events can, 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 can host that. And, and, and you know, um, I'm somewhat positive about, you know, all these things that, that, that's happening. So, so you're saying that they, this is interesting to me because I didn't think of it this way, obviously, maybe not being an artist, um, they can, they can, nurture a kind of community amongst the artists you're saying they bring them together you said a leisure moment where you're not working you work so hard and then you have these events and they maybe i don't fully appreciate sometimes the social side of what these events can foster the social benefits right you know yeah. um, um in you know on um, this quote unquote like maybe developing you know um, um thailand where you know uh the idea of the capital and then the labor and then you know um the labor you know um the, the the labor rights and all the laws concerning the you know um, um our practice you know um what i'm what i try to say is just you know um we meaning you know everybody not just in the art communities you know um we all work very hard and 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 if you know um if we have you know um things to do in our free time that 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 you know um that is you know um somewhat intellectual or or if if not you know um just just so 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 you know um i believe that you know in the more democratic kind of like society societies where where where, where we, we we have perhaps like more choices to spend or hard-earned you know um, um time i will give a bit background on on thailand biennale thailand biennale is actually the biennale that initiated by thai government and the cultural department. Um, the idea is to set up a biennale every two years in different provinces in Thailand. So it starts at Krabi, which is like one of like the most beautiful city in the country, which is the beach. So the artwork is actually uh, art specific, right? It's a specific artwork in like creating into specific site in the city. So it's like, is everywhere in the city, which is really interesting. The way that that thinking about how they want to um, building the art infrastructure in different city of the country. So if they start from Kirby, they will build and grooming the understanding for the people in the local to understand what contemporary art is, and they're trying to move into another city in the next two years and creating a new structure. So they're trying to move it every two years to a new location to kind of like creating this core of study of what contemporary art is in different location um, which is interesting and i think i have to give all this credit to the curatorial team in thailand biennale it's actually a really interesting artwork there but it's the layer that is because of it's organized by government so everyone try to ignore it <laughs> and um as to be fair, it's like it's actually a really nice kind of like a, a, a biennale, but it's because it's somewhere really far. And again, to see all this artwork, you have to put a lot of effort and money because it's quite a, a lot of money as well to go to see different art site. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we have these kind of like opponents 
uh, Biennale, which is Bangkok Art Biennale. Bangkok Art Biennale was initiated by a big company in Thailand and was directed by Apinan Posyanon, who is one of a really important figure of in Thailand. So he also invited like a different curator from Southeast Asia to creating an artwork in different site location across Bangkok as well. So even though that this is not initiated by the government, but Apinan, who also run and working in government for a long time, have this uh, good connection with different kind of like party in the government. So in the way I saw it as a one of like a really professional organization of the curated Biennale one. And also we have another one, which is Bangkok Biennial. This one is a a biennale that initiated by a group of young artists who really want to participate, who, who have their own statement that they want to, to speak out about what really happened there in Bangkok back then. So everyone can propose a proposal to open the pavilion in different sites of location and the opening and everything is just not connected at all. So we have that. And also we have ghosts which happened in the same, same time. Um, I will let Grit talking about this after. But what I really like about girls is they have this program called Storyteller. They're actually grooming a new kind of like generation. They're educating like a uh, young one who not even have to study art at all to come and learning about different kind of like issue that related to that art piece. And you can continue to talk more about this. And we have Kongan Manifesto that I already mentioned. We have Chiang Mai Penale. It's like a pain one. Penale is such a pain. So um, it's actually really diverse in the way. And there's a lot of, a lot of thoughts and input. And uh, it's actually show what really people thought and uh, different kind of idea and diversity, which I think, again, I really insist that it's it really important this day to see this diversity. Um, uh, in, one thing I would add to the Bangkok Biennial was the idea, when you said they were all disconnected, that was actually, as you may have intended, that was its goal. Um, decentralization of the curator's power which was very interesting, which is a very kind of hot topic right now in curatorial studies and curatorial practice. The idea that you can have great exhibitions that um, uh, incorporate more elements of chance and encounter that are not controlled by the curator herself or himself. Um, so that was a really interest. I thought it was a really interesting aspect uh, of, of a biennial, which doesn't have to link to a team of curators. They, they actually said there are no curators. And I had to write about it. Art in America asked me to do something on this. And I said, my God, where do I begin when there are no curators? Uh, even I was thrown aback by it. And finally tracked them down. They were anonymous. We didn't even know who they were until I was finally able to track down the people. So would you please talk to me? Tell me, you know, what this is all about because we need to talk about this internationally. So I, that was a really, to me, that was very exciting. Um, Crit, very important subject is your new, your new festival. And um, it will be recurring every three years, is it? It's a triennial, yeah. technically. Okay, tell us about that because that is another extremely important development over the last two years or so. Um. <clears throat> Well, it's 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 like it's around like five or six of us that that uh, that like work on it, um, and it's quite like yeah, it's it changes a lot like every every minute, so it's hard to form. But yeah, I, I essentially in the beginning, I think I wanted to do like a group show, and I wanted to kind of. Um, yeah, I was I was mainly thinking about all these other issues that that kind of like like uh, like uh, like kind I was I was thinking about <coughs> all the topics and interests and research 
I guess researched like topics that exist within the arts in in contemporary art in Thailand, and I was thinking about like other topics, like maybe like both made in Thailand and elsewhere also that that might be missing, you know, <coughs> and <coughs> and. It kind of followed my whole kind of like research topic in my art, anyways. With this, this idea of like deconstructing everything, even like like su like superstition, spirituality, <coughs> histories, capitalism, like everything as as stories that can kind of mesh in order for like the di different like compartmentalization of life to be able <coughs> to talk to each other, you know, <coughs> and and it's not. <coughs> It's 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 not like maybe like it's not pro globalism in a way. It's it's more like recognizing that there are different stories and they do you know what I mean? And and that's something like maybe that let's say like an artist like Hitostero does 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 affect you know like realities of people in like Thailand as well and everywhere else, you know, as much as hers. Um <coughs> yeah. And it kinda started from that um and then it, it, it built, like I said, it built further into this, this idea of like, how do we <coughs> introduce like, more like, like, a, like a platform, but also like a, a cloud of ideas, you know, that kind of in a way like these, all these, what the overlapping world that all these stories create maybe is actually like closer to like a contemporary, reality that we, we live in, then like may, maybe like each like singular artist is kind of like idea. And it was also, um, <clears throat> I wanted, I, I felt like in, <clears throat> for me personally as, as working mainly in like, in like video installation, um, <clears throat> I feel like often like you, you, when you, <clears throat> when you see a video installation and you like, and, and you spend, or a performance, and there's an embodiment, there's, there's a kind of like, um, <clears throat> There's an amount of time and the amount of, of kind of like uh, <clears throat> like the currency of time and the present of your body locating in this situation and then oftentimes it's, it's, it's more completed, you know? So I would say like seeing like a video installation by Rax Media Collective for an hour for me would be a, a, something of like a more complete experience than let's say like seeing a painting, one painting by Basquiat or something. You know what I mean? To focus on the story and storytelling and, and not the, like, the objects so much. Um, some of that is due to the fact that it's like really extremely hard to bring artwork from outside into Thailand and we were like, you know, <clears throat> we're trying to make that work. I, on my edition of it, there was a focus on like, really like things that I feel like define the physical presence, you know, and there are artists who I'm like lucky enough to be peers with like Ian Cheng, for example, who I feel like maybe eventually one day his work will like show in, you know, <coughs> Thailand, you know, maybe in like five, six, seven years. But like, I feel like there is some kind of like urgency to show it now, you know, like while ideas of AI is still forming and the work is pretty much like a simulation of like a mystical AI world than to show it in six years when like, when a 10 year old can recreate the same work. Do you know what I mean? Like it, there is something and yeah. And then also the whole thing about ghost becoming a platform like, so I'm now just kind of facil facilitating it and there's a next curator for the next edition. It's gonna be a, Christina Lee, um, and yeah, and I'm excited to work with her, and then also the, the idea of kind of like bringing her in to work with um, like, uh, like last version, like Joyce said, we had like a, this program called um, School of Storytellers, you know, and the idea is they're just like, we run a free classroom and then they're paid to kind of be almost like, like docent, like people who you would talk to, so instead of going to an exhibition and reading a wall text, there's no wall text, you would talk to a person, and you would engage. To me, I think of them as shamans, but they're more just like people you would just have conversation with freely about the work and that know more about the work and the world or the specific context that the work belong to. And we kind of further this forward now. Uh, my collaborator, like Juta, she's been running like this program. Um, and yeah, and 
I, I, I wouldn't call them curators. I see them more as like research fellows. But yeah, I, I, I think it's a, that's probably the most important part about Ghost. It's, it's really small. Every time it's only going to be like 15 artists, some screenings, some performances, and you go and you like spend time with people and you know, and, and then kind of like talk to them about stuff. And there isn't like, like this, like a lot of construction of what you do in a gallery, what is a gallery, what is contemporary art, like the, the or even the kind of like currency it has in relationship to like capital or something kind of starts to fall off a bit more, I think, you know, yeah. Um, something very interesting to me is um, this theme that keeps coming back in this conversation, cultivation, opening up, um, decentralization, building the audience, education. And I, I have to admit, when I arrived in 2010, that was not really the way you would characterize the scene. I had to do a piece for a magazine and they said, all right, what's the scene all about? And I could categorize it quite cleanly. You know, there's this kind of institution, there's the group of art galleries, there's this, this body of artists right now, this generation and whatnot. And we do see that 90s generation now really going straight into the history books in very wonderful ways and then a new generation arising. You've even talked about the next one. Um, that idea of cultivation seems to keep returning. Museum collection, private collections, um, putting forth a vision, uh, building uh, a, 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 an audience, educating an audience because it is a, a, a systemic, you talked about sustainable at one point when we were chatting earlier today over coffee, this idea of a sustainable art world depends upon an educated audience uh, anywhere in the world. Um, before we open this up to questions, which we should soon, um, we have a big event following this within minutes. Um, what do you hope for, wish for, dream about it for a future, something in the future art world here, or art scene, excuse me, in Thailand? Um, is there anything that pops, you know, a dream project, a dream uh, situation, any, anything of that notion on that note? I want to go first because I want to end first. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as mentioned, about sus sustainability? Sustain, sustainability, yeah. I wish like everyone could sustain. I wish artists could sustain. I wish like they could sell their artwork, they could make their living. Uh, I wish the art institution can sustain. Uh, I wish we could find any model that we and the art will not create more waste and waste. <laughs> and um, I wish everyone could sustain in, in their life. And I think this is a key point and thing that we have to look at that everyone in the art world need to be paid or get paid by any kind of work, any like um, labor job, like curatorial work needs to be paid, people need to pay curator, hello. And also like artists need to get the fee, need to get a production cost and in the end they should be able to live, make their life living as an artist. Mm. Uh, well, for me, you know, um, um, my, my actual dream is to, 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 to you know, um, hopefully see uh, some sort of, um, uh, you know, um, people starting perhaps like from Southeast Asia bypassing the, you know, um, the, the, the nation states and then, you know, I'm, I'm trying to like coming together in some ways that, that, that that's more even like regenerative in a sense that, that, that we can imagine something together without you know, um, having to, to be kind of like sucked into this somewhat corrupted policies proposed, that, proposed, that, you know, uh, proposed by the, you know, um, um, like the governments that we have in Southeast Asia. And of course, like, uh, may, 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 maybe that will extend you know, um, larger to, the, you know, um, like to Asia and then to you know, um, to Europe and then to the world and then that we can maybe somehow find platforms to, to kind of like figure out ways in which we can, we can you know, um, imagine future, I think. I, I um, I'll still feel the same way with the two comments. Like my <coughs> one dream that probably will never ever happen in a very practical level, like when I did a show in Finland at like the National Contemporary Art Museum there, it's called Kiasma. 
<coughs> um, the, this rich patron of the museum paid something like four million euros so that that one year every like five year old can in Finland can come to the museum once you know paid for and I thought that was like so beautiful and in a way where like like the government yeah and whoever or the government or even in the case of Thailand if it has to be like one of these corporations like kind of could see and appreciate art not as like whatever not as like continuing like old world tradition that's kind of like the government's mentality or like this capitalistic mentality where it increases value of property or whatever but to actually see it as like education and make it accessible to people as part of literally like common education and I think that's like most artists in you know like Finland's like has his problems and that's like but that was like something that like made me really hopeful about like what a place like a museum could be and is in that one instance and what someone having a lot of like money instead of being like I'm gonna buy this big expensive painting and whatever or build like a big expensive like Frank Gehry blah 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 and whatever to actually just be like you know like the my population sees art like it's pretty cool yeah I think you've all been talking about that idea of it's, it's very relational to use a term that has been around now for almost 30 years um, the idea of uh, things breaking through fixed institutions, fixed policies, fixed ideologies, and we would, I think, all hope for that in the, in the near future.